If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's your 13th time here, welcome again. But we'd love to have you as part of our podcast family. So subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and you'll be notified when new episodes drop. We don't want you to miss a single thing. So hit that follow or subscribe button and listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and wherever you go for podcasts. Hello and welcome to Positively Joy, the podcast on searching for the light in all seasons. I'm your host, Yvette Walker, and this is part three of the Joy of Hair Week. We've had some great guests on the show, but I'm so happy to introduce to you today for part three, Linda Jones, who is a writing consultant based in Dallas, Texas, and she has done something remarkable that we will that we will talk about. Linda, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome, Yvette. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course, of course. So um, let's just get to it and tell everybody what you recently revealed on social media. What did you do? Well, I shaved what was left of my hair off. (laughs) So I shaved my hair. Yeah. And, you know, you have a beautiful head. I don't, they always say that it takes a certain type of head to be able to carry that off. You have a beautiful head. Thank you. You do. Uh, But it's so interesting because you got a lot of reaction on social media when you posted this photo and when you talked about it. What was that like? Well, it was pretty overwhelming. Um, There was, uh, because of social distancing, I didn't hear reaction, but um, I felt it (laughs) through the comments. And all the exclamation points and other symbols and emojis that express surprise and emotion. So that was fun in itself. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, People just were not expecting to see what they saw. Uh, uh, They knew me with hair. And uh, many knew that I had been, been dealing with an alopecia issue for a while, uh, but they still saw me with hair. So when I made the decision to shave it all off, I wanted to present it and uh, for a couple of reasons. When I had the uh, group Nappy Hair Affair, the uh, collective that I, I founded to promote uh, African American culture and identity through appreciation of wearing natural and African-inspired styles. So during that time, 20 years, you know, women have shared with me all kinds of hair issues from, you know, issues of losing their hair because of cancer or medical situations or uh, going natural from straight or perm to natural styles and dealing with alopecia and things like that or thinning and they shared with me and the, um, how they grappled with it. So being one who also grappled with it, you know, over you know, recent years, and, and, you know, I lost my hair, you know, gradually until, you know, it was almost gone. But I totally, I was symbolically wearing natural hairstyles, more what I call African-inspired styles, that I really embraced because I love blocked the natural hair and wasn't ready to give that up yet. Mm -hmm. So um, when I decided to shave my hair and go bald, and it had to be when I was ready, Mm -hmm. um, I said, you know what? I want to present it so the sisters would know this is okay when you're ready. And it was okay with me. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, so let me put on my, (laughs) to quote a friend of mine when she talks about dressed up shoes with her southern flavor, I said, let me put on my hard shoes and my Sunday (laughs) Sunday best and present my my look. Mm -hmm. And um, the reaction was overwhelming. 
overwhelming. Um, you talked about wanting to present it all at once on social media. You knew there was going to be a lot of noise surrounding this decision that you had made. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, why I put it all out there on Facebook. Well, because I'm a, a busy person, so I figured, let, you know, let everybody react all at the same time. Let them fall out, scream, what did you do? Oh, I'm happy, whatever they were going to do, let's all do it together <laughs> <laughs> and get it over with. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I get... Uh, people needed to be gathered, I'll help gather them, <laughs> or, or what have you, and have fun, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to do it all at once, really, because, yeah, I knew there was going to be a reaction, and I actually didn't want to be dealing with reactions one by one by one by one. <laughs> right. And um, so that's one, that's one reason. Another reason, there were things coming up, that I was doing and people, uh, I'd be presenting some things and uh, the people who were, who were having the programs needed my photo and I knew what I was getting ready to do so I did not want to, I wanted to represent in the image that I would be wearing. Yes. Moving forward. So I was getting hold off a little bit. <laughs> 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 you know, so um, so I needed to get shots, new shots taken for uh, professional reasons. And like I said, I wanted to present it in a way that um, would, I think, uh, make women I know who are grappling with hair issues uh, know or feel that if this is really okay. Mm. Uh, I was inspired by it. It's, it's been, I've been feeling, you know, um, the leaning for a while. I was inspired by uh, the sister of Congresswoman, but she had the braids, she's part of the squad, right, mm -hmm. who uh, developed severe alopecia, and she lost her hair fast, really, you know, quickly. And because she was such a public person, I, you know, she was dealing with, uh, how do I do this? And she just did it. And I thought she did that well. And it was more confirmation for me as I was getting closer to making that decision. I want to do it in a way like that. And you're uh, you're referring to Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. Yes, Ayanna Presley. Mm -hmm. And um, I got it. I got everything she was saying when she talked about it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I know what women have shared with me about their hair issues, and I, you know, tried to talk to them and encourage them um, when I was um, working. I'll say working with uh, Nappy Hair Affair and the way that I was. So what I had in mind, because I was running a lot of pictures of me, so I didn't want it to be about a lot of pictures of me, but symbolically I wanted it to, to I wanted to present it in a way that it would um, encourage, if you will, but in their own time. Right. Um, and you said, you know, you had to make this decision in your own time um, so that you, right. you were ready and you felt good about it. You, um, after you posted your photo and the world blew up, <laughs> but then after that, uh, you posted, um, you posted, I, I would call this poetry, um, called natural progression. And I wonder if you would read that for us. Maybe I should tell you why I wrote this. Yes. First, I, I, um, when I made the decision to do what I was going to do, and being a writer and being someone who encourages others to write their thoughts and their feelings and so forth, um, I said to myself, you need to write your thoughts and your feelings <laughs> about this, uh, whether it's a journal, you know, what have you. And what's funny is I went out to where I walk, walk, and I, I sat under a tree <laughs> on a bench with my little notebook. Mm -hmm. You know, and shine and all that, and I and I okay. So how do you feel? And crickets. I don't know nothing. You know, in terms of like, well, this is the perfect setting. You know, isn't something supposed to happen? You know, poetic <laughs> something. And then I got quiet and settled down and had no expectations of myself but to just feel. And then it came, and I wanted to describe. For me, I wanted to describe what. What's happening with me? Um, some people, you know, it, it's not this 
next upper level, next higher level thing that some have suggested because that would suggest that I no longer love locks and natural hair, African inspired hair, African inspired hair. No, it was the next phase. So natural progression came. Mm. And that's what this form is about. Okay, it's called natural progression. A natural progression is so seamless and nonchalant. It is never hurried or anxious, unbothered by the expectations of organized time. It moves instinctively and with agency. It is never hurried or anxious, moving when her time is right, instinctively and with agency, and as easy as a breeze, moving when her time is right, to enter that next season as easy as a breeze, feeling free, to be, to enter that next season, feeling free to be, unbothered by the expectations of organized time, a natural progression is so seamless and so nonchalant. And you wrote that on June 19th, and when did you shave your head? Oh, actually, it the, the June 19th was when I revealed it, if you will, okay. publicly, but I shaved it. It was two weeks before that. Okay. And the only reason why I didn't, uh, but I was still walking around with it covered because I was busy. I could, didn't have time to deal with the passing out and all of that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I said, I'm going to you know, like I said, I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to do this on Friday, Friday evening, then it's time to kind of have fun with with the reaction and respond to people and, and um, be there to receive, but it was so overwhelming, I thought I was going to short circuit, to be honest. I really did. <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the call, and I said, you know, something, because I talked to only a handful of people um, live, if you will, on the phone. All the reaction was social media. And so we are so creative because people found ways to let me know how they felt through exclamation points, punctuation marks, you know, emojis and all variations of that. So I was like, wow, this was audio. <laughs> <laughs> but recently I've had a few people calling me because they, you know, they just saw it and I did on the other end of the phone, their feet, they're bellowing and the guttural, I mean, it was like no words, I don't know what to say. <laughs> And celebration and talking in tongues. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. It's it, it it's been fun. People have been beautiful. Um, but the reveal, the reveal on on June nineteenth, uh, is was that date significant to the reveal? Someone told me. I no, I just said I'm gonna okay, Friday, let's do this. And then I had people say, you know, it's Juneteenth and it's freedom and it, I said, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. I had that was you know, it's something how things fall into place naturally when you for me, when you um Pardon the pun, but naturally, when you make a decision and it feels right for you, mm -hmm. things fall into place. I mean, with the people I asked, the woman, I, you know, to drag to cut my hair, and she was just so honored to do it, and I was so honored to have her do it. The photographer who took the picture, she had to be the one because she had always taken my uh, professional pictures when I was wearing locks, mm -hmm. those types of people. And I said, this is a progression for me, another transition for me, and I want you to do it. She was like, oh, she was there. Uh, from, you know, it's just the coming together of the people who supported me and got it. And what was so profound for me is, you know, I told you what I wanted to do in terms of um, messages or, or um 
supporting in my own way other sisters who were dealing with this. Um, they seemed to get it, but it, it was it seemed to be so universal. It hit a chord, not just about hair, but about self acceptance. Mm. And I, there was one. Oh my goodness! There was one the um, <laughs> the friend who called last night. She was screaming and 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 making all kinds of weird noises because she said, "I have no words." And, and, and then when there was some clarity in what she was saying, she said, you made me feel more beautiful than I already am. Wow. And what a compliment. That, um, it, was, it was a compliment to me, but it was a compliment, period, I think it was like. Yeah. Disconnecting. It's not like she's a mirror image of me. She's shades lighter than I am. Mm-hmm. She has hair. <laughs> she has locks. But she was saying this, and, you know, um, several others have expressed that through, you know, the Internet and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and that met me, made me feel really good. There's some who said, I'm doing it. I've got my hair. <laughs> um, there was one guy that contacted me and said that he... His daughter passed last year uh, on Juneteenth, and um, he said when he read the poem, it resonated with him. It spoke mm-hmm. to him, and it, that kind of caught me because I know why I wrote it, right about this transition for me with the hair and the image. But I said, I need to read this again, and, and you know... I, I sent him a note back saying, I'm, I'm so honored, I expressed my condolences, but I was honored that my poem could speak to him. And then when I looked at it again, when it talked about natural transitions and mm-hmm. progression, when it's time, that caught me for a minute. That, that, and it, it really affirmed that what I was trying to do and trying to uh, make it not be totally about me, that, that affirmed that for me. Wow. You know, for some people, uh, hair um, is a very spiritual thing. Uh, Some people bury their hair, bury their locks when they cut them. Some people only cut them when they have some significant strife going on and they they need some, some positive energy. A lot of people do different things, you know, differently, obviously. Um, yeah. did you have any of that perspective? Did you, I mean, obviously it was a big change in your life, surely. Um, mm-hmm. but did you feel anything on another plane? I guess I can say, was it, was it deep in some way for you? What was, what was deep in a sense is that it's so important to, to listen to yourself and, you know, there's always the little voice that speaks to me sometimes, and we would con- consult. And <laughs> is this the time? No, not yet. No, not yet. And mm-hmm. this, oh, this is the time. And when it felt right for me, it's like no one can say anything. No one can. I, I'm good. I'm good. This is right. So for me, it was such a spiritual thing because after that happened, and after I made the decision to do it, it was like that higher power kind of opened up and said, gotcha, okay, you're ready here. And all beautiful things happen spiritually in terms of reaction, people feeling some who are grappling with some things, sharing with me the same way they used to share when, you know, uh, with through Matthew Hair Fear. It's the same issues of image and self-esteem and beauty, um, standards of beauty, mm-hmm. et cetera. So it wasn't, you know... Um, it was, I didn't feel that kind of uh, affirmation, I guess, until after it happened. Then I decided, and then after it happened. And it was like, because when I couldn't come up with words in the beginning, when I did the poem and so forth, it's because I just feel good. I just feel like me. I don't know what, to, what words to put on that. Because, and then it comes up into this punny kind of stuff. It's just real natural. Yeah. It's just real free. All those things that could sound kind of cliche, but it wasn't because it's how I felt. And 
for me, I felt until I did this, 99% of me. Mm. Because I love, like I said, the natural hair look, the locks, the nappiness, all of that. When I was no longer able to wear my own hair that way, I was able to wear it symbolically. And it wasn't a secret because the people made too much of a fuss over my hair and how much they liked it. I'm confessing in a minute, well, thank you, this really is mine, you can buy, you know, <laughs> what have you. But because I always wanted to be true, you know, to that and to people about it. So when I did this, it became 100%. Mm. So it's like, yeah, this feels good. So now I have a new regimen. So okay, when the makeup artist <laughs> she was doing my hair, she you know put a little you know kind of blotted my hair too, mm-hmm. made up my hair. <laughs> and so now this oil thing I have to get. Now the sunscreen just doesn't go on my arms when I go out. It goes on my head. Right. Uh, there's different ways to protect my head. Um, I was very picky with her, and that's why I wanted her to do my makeup, I said. I I don't want anything that appears to be overcompensating. Right. You know, I don't want mile-long eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything, you know, I'm here, this is me, I will make up the way I make, the way I make up, and, you know, the way I normally make up if I'm doing something special yes that's what i wanted so wow wow you've you've mentioned the nappy hair affair a couple of times and in this role um as a community leader bringing this community together um and as i said you are uh, a self-professed naptivist nappy activist (laughs) i love that word um you were also under the alter ego of a woman named mozetta who is Mozetta? Number well, who is Mozetta? What does she do? And what does she think about your head? <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Well, Mozetta is the name that comes from when I started Nappy Hair Fair, and Nappy Hair Fair essentially grew out of my having gatherings that became known as Hair Day Gatherings at my house, and then we started rotating at different places and different homes, where uh, black women started out, got together to do each other's natural hair and African-inspired styles, a lot because there are so many issues about it, um, you know, the good hair, bad hair controversy, et cetera, so I'm saying, you know, nonsense. Let's get together, celebrate our culture through nurturing our hair. Mm-hmm. Your hair is okay in my place, so let's do this. So, as so many times after those gatherings, people, somebody in the group would say, "Oh my God, I feel so free! Oh, I feel so free!" So, one of the regulars, and I, when I was sharing this with her, she looked at me and she said, "Moses." <laughs> 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 and then she said, <laughs> no, Mozetta, she gave it a feminine spin, spin and said, you're leading us out, you know, from essentially hair bondage to what the friend goes uh, to the land of the nappy and free. <laughs> and so the name stuck and I ripped all up of it and, you know, came up with things like the kink commandments, Mozetta's kink commandments, et cetera, had a lot of fun with using words, my background is words, mm-hmm. writing, uh, using words to celebrate our culture using hair as that vehicle. Mm-hmm. So Mozetta was my name. People know, some people don't know me as Linda. Some people <laughs> do or call me Mozetta the Kink Crusader. Mm-hmm. So I have fun with Mozetta. She's my alter ego, and sometimes she steps in front of me and tries to take over. Uh, so sometimes they have to consult with her on things. Uh, she's good with it. Was, Mozetta, you you talked about having a little voice. Was that Mozetta? Was she your little voice? No, but no. Mozetta, Mozetta wanted, you know what Mozetta wanted to do? She kicked back and said, this is on you. You do this. I'm Mozetta. I'm your nappy alter ego. I'm going to be here. As a matter of fact, we're still going to do naptism whenever people need them. Uh-huh. But this is your decision, Linda. So 
So that other little voice was that other, that Linda conscious thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to do this, but you need to feel ready. And if I have to be honest with myself, there was a time I wasn't ready. I didn't feel secure enough to where I know I needed to be. Mm-hmm. And it's so, it was so magical when it was ready because it's like, oh my God, no one can touch this. If they're having issues with it, you know, it was a banker woman, a, a woman at the bank I went to, and that was, I think, my true test. <laughs> we were talking, and I had to come back for a couple of days later to finish out the transaction we were doing. And we became friendly, and uh, and she, <laughs> I said, well, when I come back, you might not recognize me. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, well, between me and you, you know, I'm shaving the rest of my hair, all my hair. And I showed her a picture. I had a copy of one of the pictures. Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, my goodness, why are you doing that? Oh, hair, it's such a wonderful thing. It's so, oh, and, and she says, are you good? I said, I'm good. And I'm looking at her like, well, she'll get over it. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> she was like acting like I was cutting her hair off. Mm-hmm. And so I said, you know what? That that was confirmation. It did. It, it wasn't. And if you're not ready for something like this, somebody saying something like that, you could have second thoughts or doubts or what am I doing? Right. But I did not. I was like, she'll be she'll be okay. <laughs> 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 so it's a wonderful feeling. Let me just tell you that it, it's a. It's, I'll have my. Um, I can't say bad hair day. But I'll have my bad days, <laughs> you know, days where I may not feel so pretty in the way that I feel like back when I had hair, just not feeling good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not going to change. But I'm telling you, there's a certain kind of freedom that I'm feeling that, wow, it's, it feels pretty good. That's beautiful. <laughs> I uh, I know Mosetta lets you make this decision on your own, but... Uh, but her phrase, her catchphrase is nappy is just a natural state of hair and open state of mind. I can see some applications to this as far as open state of mind. Yes. Well, and when I said that with the natural, you know, Rosetta, that's her saying, natu- nappy is a natural state of hair and an open state of mind. Essentially, you know, to refer to that, people essentially need to be open enough and not so judgmental about things that are different because things that are different are not things that are wrong, particularly when it comes to us, our color, our tradition, how we, you know, how we show up. Mm-hmm. And so essentially was kind of a way of slipping in, you know, just open up your mind because we're good. Um, so with this, yeah, it could be the same thing because I, I don't have any great pronouncements or anything like that. All of the stuff I was doing, I was doing, you know, a part of my transition that I wanted to share. And I wanted to share it as a way of sending a message to sisters who might be dealing address, dealing with making decisions about image, not necessarily hair. But, you know, that was a large part of it because what's been shared with me. So I don't, I didn't come with any pat kind of phrasing. Those things are going to evolve just like the natural progression. Yeah. By, you know, uh, so, so when all the noise happens, I, I have to learn how to uh, receive it all because it's pretty overwhelming. Mm. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I keep laughing because some of the noise is the funniest, guttural, crazy sounds when people are calling me because it's saying, I don't have words. I just have this feeling. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I appreciate that. What was your reaction? Because we've known each other for a long time. Yeah, be- I'm telling you, beautiful. I mean, the the photo, it stopped me. And it was just beautiful. It was you. I recognized you right away. I mean, you look like you. But you look like, you know, almost a glamorous version of you. And maybe that's okay. just, be- and maybe that's just what we, I don't know what we, what we think of when we see something different, I don't know, but, but I just, I just stared for a long time and I was like, that is, it was such a beautiful photograph, photograph, of course, 
itself was very beautiful. But all I could think of was, I could think bold, brave, and beautiful. Oh, thank you. And, but, you know, for your audience, we've known each other more than 20 years, seen each other in the newsroom. Right. And I was a pretty casual person in the newsroom. If I dressed up, forgot something was wrong. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Let's go down. Let's go talk to management about something he's pissed off about. Because I was casual. <laughs> and so I think, and, and so it was so important to me to present this because there's negativity around things like this, right? Right. right. That same with natural hair or certainly wearing your hair bald when this, if there's this thing about, you know, the bouncing and behaving kind of thing. Right. So I said, we're going to, just like I used to say, you know, with my little nappy inner circle when we would meet, talk about how to present nappy hair affair to the best I did this nappy cannot be, cannot be raggedy, Mm -hmm. because that's what people expect, or the perception they have of natural hair. Yeah. So, so, the same with this, I wanted to present it in a way, uh, giving it the most respect that I could give it, as a way of respecting how, you know, others who may be trying to make some decisions. So you you mentioned that you had some things coming up and you needed to take photos. So you said, wait a minute, because you knew you were going to do this. So what's next for you? Uh, You mentioned that maybe, you know, maybe there will continue to be naptivism that goes on. But what's next for you? One of the things that I do as a writer and a writing consultant, I focus on um, writing uh, to promote wellness, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, and also to preserve story, our story, legacy. And um, there's, um, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm actually taking advantage of this sheltering in time to hone my program, some of the programming that I'm doing. Mm. Uh, I had uh, something going, uh, some poetry sessions, uh, pantoon sessions online for people to exhale with poetry, sort of an hour to um, decompress. And I stopped it for a few weeks once again because it was going to be this image change. Mm-hmm. And the pictures I had before was of me looking like I was then. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. uh, so, um, so where can pe- where can people find you online, either for con- for uh, your consulting or uh, or any of your work? Um, Linda at the dot com is my. The, my um, email address, um, I'm on Facebook. I'm more active on Facebook than other platforms right now. Um, well, Linda Jones, writer, they'll find it there um, through LinkedIn. And um, my website is uh, com. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's the writing, D-O-U-L-A dot com. D-O-U-L-A, I help people give birth to their work. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, it does focus on, when I say wellness, I'm a certified grief recovery specialist, so I assist people who are navigating through grief, and I help them through writing, writing is therapy, uh, writing for emotional uh, intelligence, work that I do, expressive writing, that has a lot to do with emotional well-being, mm. so I am doing that kind of work. I still do editing. I'm working on uh, with a couple clients now on their books. So writing consultant is that umbrella for writing for you, helping you with writing, and helping you um, heal yourself through writing, and also writing as a way of making sure our stories are told and preserved. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with us and, and also sharing your poem, Natural Progression, is, is beautiful and um, does sum up a lot of your work and a lot of what you do. So um, I thank you again for, for being on the show. Thank you. So good to see you. It's good to see <laughs> the you. The working woman in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some truth in that. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, I that. Oh, thank you. Oh.
And to our listeners, thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get notifications when we have uh, new episodes. Um, The podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts and also on YouTube. Uh, So please subscribe or follow. Hit that subscribe or follow button. Um, So again, thank you. And as always, this has been the Positively Joy podcast. Farewell for now. Mm